Welcome back YouTube and fellow berserkers. Today, I'm going to make a tinder pouch for the flint steel that I forged the last couple videos ago. Getting the outline here. So I'm gonna try to cut along the line here that I drew with the marker just now to make a little bit more neater circle because I did want to make it look really nice. But uh, it's not that important that it's a perfect circle. It has to be close. Now this is a really simple method to make a simple leather pouch. It doesn't have to be a tender pouch. You can put whatever you'd like in it. This is a really easy, quick method to make a bushcraft style pouch for, you could put, you could keep your uh, Viking silver in it. You could keep uh, you know, whatever you'd like in there basically. Carry it around. There. That was the first step we needed to cut out our circle to do this type of pouch. Now I have a special set of hole punches, different sizes. Usually you use these in the automotive uh, world to make, ga to make gaskets and all the bolt holes. So I'm going to choose the size that I like the most and because it's I'm going to explain that in a second here when I find it. I think it's this one. Um, I got this on a number, a quarter, quarter inch. So that's about 6.3 millimeters. Around six or seven millimeters is fine. Uh, that's just about a perfect size. I've done some experimentation with whatever sizes I have here. I've got smaller ones. They absolutely don't work. They, you get too much binding when you try to uh, close up the pouch or open it and you're constantly fighting with it and you end up breaking the leather. Or, or the actual string, or the leather, or the leather string. This is, uh, out of experience, the best size. There are several ways you could do this. You could manually punch each hole all the way around, and uh, even number of holes is is what I recommend. Or you could do like I do mostly, is find the outer edges like this, fold it in half. Or you could do like, I, you could actually uh, do this two different ways. You could punch each hole individually, which works very well. It just takes very long and you have to make sure you kind of space them out evenly so that you end up with an even amount of holes. I space them out about, I'm about to say about two or three inches and see how that looks when you get done. You don't want too many holes. It makes the leather too weak and it doesn't really uh, look nice. So what I usually do to cheat a little bit, actually it's not cheating, it's just working smart. So I'm going to start off center here and space the next one off center exactly to the other side. The reason being is if I start in the middle, I have by experience, I always end up with one hole too short weaving the string through. So I'm going to try it this way and I still may have to punch an extra additional hole at the end if it's uh, not perfectly even the way the string is supposed to go. So we'll have to see, see how that ends. I'm going to have my trusty mallet here. I have a smaller version of this somewhere, but I can't find it at this very moment. This will do it fine. So just very, give it two taps, holding the leather in place and carefully placing down the, the punch to align it, to make it nice and even from the center. Right there, yes. Give it a nice two wax and then just check to see if the hole is punched all the way through, which it is there. And then I go back over here, space it out nice and evenly. And I go back over here. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to pull a lot of string off of the roll. I'm going to go around one time, roughly the circumference plus some, just so I have some extra. And I will show you why I do this. So, we can always shorten it some. I don't want to make it too long so I don't waste any, or it doesn't get wasted because it's a resource and I like to treat it about like it's valuable. So what I'm going to do with this uh, beeswax here is I'm going to apply it to this piece of string, similar to the way you would do to like a bowstring. And I'm going to do that as long 
as it takes until I can feel the string get really solid. It'll become, uh, instead of like a fluffy, it'll become really, really hard and solid and you can then assure that the string fibers are starting to bond together and give the string additional strength. What this also does is it makes it slightly water repellent so it doesn't get wet and uh, keeping the fibers together it makes it easier to weave through the individual holes and once you get that step done we're gonna put something neat on the end a piece of antler or bone or something we'll have to see what we have laying around this is what you want to end up with right here this ended up really nice you want to end up with both ends out the back uh, actually the outside of the pouch so we did that experiment and it worked quite well what you want to do now is place this on the table put your fist in the middle and you want to very carefully pull the string and get the bag to to form up into like a sh like a shell like this this is what you want and there's your pouch there's your tinder pouch and you can get some more of the wax if you need it if you, can, if you can tell that the string isn't doing what you want, you just give it some more wax. And you have to, the trick with the wax is to do this frequently, really fast, and apply quite amount of pressure so that the wax melts off of the wax piece onto your string. And it actually gets in the string quite well. So here we have our pouch part. What we're gonna do next is actually, and now find something that we can use as a stopper right here for the, for the, uh, to cinch this down. So we're gonna take a quick look around the shop here. I'll put my gloves back on and go dig in my box of bones over here. Yes, that's correct. I said box of bones. Yes. Who else doesn't have a box? Yes, I have a box of bones, or a pail of bones. And there are some nice things in here. Yes, I had permission to gather these in the forest, in case anybody's wondering. These are mostly wild boar and uh, our local roe deer. And uh, the farmer, the uh, hunters actually discard of these and they just lay in the forest to rot. And I got permission to go collect up some of the the actual bones. This is pretty neat. Yes, we're gonna get some of these. Take this. It's really cool. But this looks really cool. We're gonna use that. We're gonna use that to put it right here. I have this really cool piece of a, of a it looks like a deer backbone. And uh, I'm going to now drill a hole right in the center. I think I drilled that hole a bit too large, but that's perfect. It'll work. Yeah, this will work out fine to tighten that down. And now I'm going to do the same thing with each of these pieces of backbone. I'm going to drill right through there, through the part there, so that I can make, so that I can rejoin these pieces. Yes, I can rejoin these pieces on the on the, um, I think three is enough. Yes, th three, three would be enough. I don't want to make it too bulky. Kind of give it like a decoration, you know? There we go. That's pretty neat right there. Yeah. How that looks. Got the, the Viking pouch here with the bones. That's pretty cool. So we have our basic pouch built and a little bit of the, the decoration. You can pull that back, you can open it up, it's perfect. You can even put some, you can decorate this any way you want. This is just something, just something, you know, quick and neat, make it look really cool. So I went, the previous video, you saw me collecting up all of the, like the, uh, the tree sap. I'm gonna put in some tree sap. Right here, the tree sap from the previous video. There we go. Nice little, little neat uh, 
a little bundle of birch bark. Now we're also gonna need some fat wood. So I'm gonna set this aside. I'm gonna get my fat wood that I harvested. All the good pieces go flying. Ow! All right. There's some fat wood, plenty. We're gonna place that in there. Okay. Now, we're gonna need some charred cloth, aren't we? Let's put this away for later. You know, workbench. Now, like I mentioned earlier in another video, several videos, charred cloth. Charred cloth is hygroscopic. That means it absorbs moisture from the air. That's very important that you know that because if you don't, you're gonna pull your tinder pouch out one day and it won't work because this will be all moist. That's why I keep it in a plastic bag. I know it's not historically correct, but it is uh, the best solution for that problem. I need it to work when I go to use it. So I have to rely on it. I have a scrap piece here of leather. I'm going to cut a small, I'm going to try to cut a small square piece. I'm going to fold it over the char cloth. This also protects it while you're traveling. Char cloth is very porous and it's easy to, it's very brittle. If you're not careful, it'll just fall apart in your hands. So I'm also going to put this in this little bag here and just tie, and just give it a couple of wraps my, without my finger. So there's some charred cloth inside this roll, nice rolled up, protected. We're going to put it in the pouch. Well, uh, it's getting kind of crowded in here. Let me pull this back over where you can see it. Now, one thing I do not have for this kit, which is very unfortunate, is some dry grass. That is going to be the component that I can't add. A small bundle of dry grass, but that's going to be something that uh, one can find on, on their own really easily here when the springtime comes around. So we're gonna need the fire steel. Just try to kind of arrange everything in here so that it'll actually close up nicely. I can't use my shoulder. This is really hard. Ouch, pain. There. And then I usually just wrap it around one time. And there's a nice Nice Viking tinder pouch with some cool decorations off hanging off of it. Well, I hope you enjoyed the video. I hope you are inspired maybe now to go out and make your own kit. Um, probably the only piece that you won't just be able to go and just get would be the flint and the steel. Uh, they do sell those online and they're very efficient, cheap alternative to the flint striker that I have there that I forged would be using just a regular old file. This is just a quick, quick demonstration that how well this works. And you see sparks, you can see sparks come off that. It works even better when there's no rough surface. So they just a uh, thought for you guys if you wanted to try, I would cut probably, you know, about the size of my thumb maybe about about this size right here, that'd be perfect. 
I would sand all the teeth off very slowly, cooling it down in between, not to get this hot. Like I said, if you heat it up, it will anneal it, it will rearrange the carbon inside the metal, and the metal will be soft, and it will not work with the flint. It will not, start, it will not strike sparks. I need it to be as simple as possible because it's just, it's just something that serves a function, and I, I like to decorate it with some bones and some, some glass beads sometimes that I have acquired. And usually the size, this is about a fair size right here for a pack for, for the average use. You've seen the one at the Viking camp that I use, which is sitting right over here. It's about five times the size. It's, it's humongous compared to this one. But like I said, this is for the Viking camp and I need to have absolute everything in there all the time so that I absolutely do not fail at making fire. Well, that being said, I uh, hope you enjoyed this short video. If you are new to the channel and uh, you like what you see, please consider subscribing if you not already have. I would really appreciate it. And ring the bell and click the like button if you like this video. It really helps out the channel. I'm really trying hard to grow this channel and expand it to make it something great so I can share with you guys and take you along on my journey through all the ups and downs. And uh, just wanted to say that this channel means a lot to me and you guys mean a lot to me and it's part of my life. It's become part of my life now that has given me um, something to look forward to every day, which is a very positive thing. And I thank all you guys for being part of that. So stay safe and I hope to see you soon.